Hey everybody, and welcome to episode four of the Pixels Without Borders podcast. I'm Joe, aka Comatose, and I'm joined by a whole crew of freaks today. We got Chris. How you going? Yeah, what's happening? We got Moosh. Hey guys. Brian. How's it going, Brian? Sip. We got the ever wonderful Cody. Hello. And the crazy, stupid Donovan Viper. How's it going, Liam? Hello. All right. Um, I know we were going to talk about a multitude of things today. Uh, you guys want to start off with how Atlas was bought by Sega? Yeah, that's cool. Well, as we know, uh, Sega has bought Atlas. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, Atlas and Index um, went up for sale a while back because they filed for bankruptcy and Sega bought them. So what's you guys' uh, thoughts on Sega buying out Atlas? Is that second? Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm happy that Atlas have been bought, but I'm not happy that they've been bought by Sega, because, I don't know, I just, I can imagine Sega being dicks now, they've got this, like, powerhouse of a company under them, and I can imagine them just saying, no, we're not releasing anything outside of Japan, or even worse case, they're not hitting Japan or something, I can imagine them just being straight and restricting something and I don't want that to happen you know initially I didn't even think Sega was even the, in the running to buy Atlas I mean because there was forefronts of like Nintendo and Sony and all of a sudden Sega buys them I was I was taken aback really yeah true we were just uh, like I said I'm happy that they bought but I'm not happy that they've been bought by Sega unless Sega bought them and they said carry on what you're doing um, but no fucking illegal money laundering bullshit. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I totally agree with like what you've just said, Chris, but um, I've no idea what Sega are like for importing like main Japanese titles over to the rest of the world. So. And anyone else got input on this? Oh, <laughs> is that me, Moosh and uh, Joe? <laughs> I, I didn't even realise that, you know, Sega was doing that well, to be honest, <laughs> to buy Atlas. Yeah, you think well, a lot of other... To be fair, I don't know if they really are doing that well. I think this is Alaska Shepard to hopefully keep them out of bankruptcy. Well, they gotta, be, they gotta be doing better than Capcom only has $154 million in the <laughs> bank. <laughs> Capcom are fucked right now. You know, this yeah. is completely into a different subject, though. But did you know that they're doing a Kickstarter for a Mega Man board game? <clears throat> Bullshit. It's just... Uh, why? Yeah, I was just thinking, like, we all just said then, though, like, um, Sega, we thought it didn't have much money, but when THQ went down, didn't they buy a few of their licenses? Yeah. They did. They did, yeah. They but here's the thing, let me, let me ask this. I don't know a whole lot about Atlas, personally. Um, so, Sega Sammy obviously took over the Index Corp, which owned Atlas. What else did they get with that? Because surely they didn't just get Atlas out of it. I don't really know much about... Oh. Atlas's parent company. I thought they were just some sort of digital distribution company or something like that. I don't know. Well, as far as I know, what they got, they they did. They have just got Atlas because Atlas were in that much shit. Does well, that now mean they own all of Atlas's IPs as well? And unless they're in talks with others, but if they do, that means they've got the Shin Megami Tensei, the Persona series. They got everything. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, are you guys that afraid? What's what's the biggest things coming out of Atlas? I mean, you've got Persona, you got the Mega Ten series. I mean, what else is there? Well, they bring out a lot of niche titles that don't usually make it to the States otherwise. Like, they just recently brought out Dragon's Crown, and they brought out Knights in the Nightmare on PSP and DS. Um, they did Odin Sphere. Uh, they, they uh, do a lot it... of... Go ahead. Uh, fucking, I don't know how to, how to, how to pronounce it. Is it uh, Yagudra Union? Yagudra Union? Yeah. Which is in the same uh, series as Knights in the Nightmare. They did, um... Did they do this one? Where is that? They did uh, they publish a lot. Gunganir, which is another uh, game on PSP. Um, they published uh, Code of Princess on the... 3DS. Yeah, that, that, to be honest, that, that, 
to me they're in the same same sort of vein as X Seed with you know the translations and the localizations. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they publish a hell of a lot of games that would never make it over here. Gotcha. As long as they keep it away from companies like Nintendo and Sony, you know, where they do, like, the collaboration games, because nobody really wants to see a, a Shin Megami Tensei character or a Persona character in Mario vs. Sonic of the Olympic Games or anything God, stupid no. like they, that. Uh, no, that would be just weird, but they are already doing some sort of crossover. They're doing a Persona and and uh, a Fire Emblem crossover. Oh, I can't wait for that. That's going to be awesome. Freaking awesome. I mean, you were speaking of crossovers, and I think the only one good thing I could think of if, like, Nintendo bought Atlas and things would have been their characters being thrown in Smash Bros, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, here, here's another thing, too. They've, Sega's already announced earlier in the year that they're going to start collabing with Nintendo a lot more. So, I mean, this this could be a potential for more Wii U publishing as well. True. You can see a lot more of these games come out on, on consoles for the Wii U, which would be a good thing. You can sell more systems. Yeah, hopefully. That, that is a good point. Of course it is. Who knows what the job is. The beard is spoken. Now, honestly, though, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about Atlas and their funding and stuff, but they did come out with an open letter to the fans saying that, you know, this is kind of a mutual agreement that's going to help both businesses, and they assure people that, you know, nothing's going to really change. So yeah. we all know that could be a bunch of shit. But yeah, but Atlas isn't, will tell. Atlas isn't known for just telling people a bunch of shit, so. Okay, moving right along. Um, GTA V sold over a billion dollars in three days. That's pretty damn impressive. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Shut up, Peter. You're drunk. <laughs> you know, he's basing that off something completely stupid. I mean, this is one game selling a billion dollars in three days. He's talking mobile games. There's thousands of those. Of course they're going to sell billions of dollars in, in a day. <laughs> Because there's thousands of them. Fuck. Yeah, totally. That guy's a fucking idiot. I mean, just so everyone knows, we're talking about uh, Peter Moore and you, the guy who did Fable and stuff. Um, but yeah, he's oh, he's just a tool. I mean, he's known in developing industry just for bullshitting and lying. But now he's up by like, Microsoft class and things like. That. Obviously, he's gonna sit there and say, "Oh no, it's not selling as well as it should." <clears throat> but yeah, you know, he's he's just pissed off because he hasn't made a decent game since 2000. <laughs> I, I fucking tell you what I'm still waiting for my fucking dragon in Fable where's my dragon bitch <laughs> there's trains oh that's a bullshit <laughs> anyway back, back on GTA yeah GTA 5 fucking as usual it's, it's, it's another thing like Call of Duty, FIFA's all the big titles, it's going to sell millions, obviously this has gone billions because of how big it is. And to be honest, when it comes to trailers and storytelling, Rockstar are second to none really because they've got really good fucking writers and the trailers, are, it, it's rare mm. a developer does better in terms of trailers that gets you hyped up for a title. Yeah, totally agree. Um, it's like, I was saying earlier to everyone, um, with other GTAs, I've never really bought any of those before, they've always been bought by my brother, but this one, um, I've watched every trailer from, like, when the first announced it onwards, and each trailer you saw, you just got more and more hyped, and I mean, they've still got the hype there, because they're still to bring GTA online next week, and just even the trailer for that as well, and that's not even the main story, got everyone super hyped. Well, they, they did a fantastic job, marketing because... This was literally my first GTA that I ever purchased, especially brand new. I mean, I, I bought GTA 4 used once. Um, I really just I couldn't get into it. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm not big into sandbox games, but the hype for this game was so fucking ridiculous and it was marketed so well that I went out and picked it up. And mm. I've been doing shit out of it so far. They must have put a ton of money into advertising, I mean, not just on trailers, but even posters and things. I mean, I've gone around my towns and stuff around my area, and I've even seen posters for GTA in tiny little like nobody towns where there's not much going on it's everywhere yeah it's, it's it's a massive massive game and 
a lot of people are just waiting for the online now because they're starting to finish it now. They're starting to get through it, and the people that aren't, they're the people that are, I suppose you could say, really appreciating the game, really, or they're just the game's just getting hammered. But it is a fantastic game, definitely, for everybody that's... Wait, so the, but the online starts, what, Tuesday? Uh, yeah. yeah. October 1st. Um... I mean, the online itself, um, I can't wait to see where they go with that, since they've said it's not just the online for GTA V, it's going to be a whole, like, a whole beast in itself. It's going to start with just, obviously, the world of GTA V, Los Santos and all that, and then eventually it's going to build and they're going to have more areas. But people are thinking, oh, we'll probably get Liberty City and Vice City and all this thrown in. But I think what they're probably going to end up going to do with it is give us the other two areas from San Andreas first, which would make a lot more sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously, because you've already got an area from San Andreas. But what I don't like, <clears> what I've read about the fucking GTA Online, is that it's, it's microtransactions, pay to win. Yep. I yep. absolutely despise that. Playing it with friends will be an absolute riot. Like, yeah, let's go play tennis, then shoot some motherfucker, rob his car, then play golf. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know for a fact from, I mean... People, I've watched a few people on YouTube who've been invited by Rockstar to go play online already, and they've said it does take a hell of a long time even just to save up for your first little tiny apartment. But you know with this microtransactions, day one, a bunch of people are going to throw a bunch of money at that and have the best stuff from day one. Yeah, which is bullshit. And as with GTA V, comes controversy within what? 12 hours of its release, somebody in the UK had already been bricked and stabbed yes. within half an hour of arriving home from the supermarket or a midnight launch. I mean, that's just fucking pathetic. <clears throat> but I think, even though that is a bad thing, uh, one of the worst things in our terms as gamers is they're not going to point the finger at the people who've done it or anything like that. They'll point the finger straight at Rockstar themselves. Yeah, that's true. It, it's Rockstar's fault for releasing the game and it's our fault for buying it. Exactly. It's, I mean, thank God Chuck Thompson's not around this time, or it'd be him all over the place again. God, that guy's hilarious. I actually wish he were around, because he, he was just funny. Yeah. He just talked so much shit. I mean, uh, I know, Joe, you haven't picked up GTA yet. Well, Liam's playing it at the minute, and so is Coda. Uh, I mean, has, has any controversy happened around your yeah. area, Coda? Um, I've, I've heard of some things where people got, you know, mugged and shit like that over the game. It's just the typical same shit anytime new release. It happens, happens every year with Call of Duty, happens with Madden, happens uh, with all the big releases. You know, when yeah. you fucking, when you live in a ghetto-ass area, shit's gonna happen. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I heard a pretty big story from US about GTA. This was about a week after one in UK. Uh, there were a kid who was special needs. Uh, well, they wanted a kid, they were actually an adult, um, yeah, had special needs, and he got beat up and robbed for it and things. But uh, Rockstar heard about this, um, found him through Twitter or something, and it ended, they were like to say sorry for him, sent him, sent him a big bundle of special edition for nothing, and nice. a bunch of other goodies. Nice. So, oh, that's, that's yeah. See, that's nice when developers do that. It's, it's nice to see that they are like, reading the news stories, the Twitter feeds, the forums, and shit like that, and they think, yeah, it, it costs us fuck all because we've already made a billion in three days. What? What's hundred and twenty quid? Let Let me throw this at you guys. So, <clears throat> obviously, I'm new to the whole series and stuff like that. But this is something that I thought would be a little bit controversial, but surprising to me, it wasn't. Is the fact that this game released without the online um, came? It's coming what a couple weeks later. I thought that would be one thing because it feels any other big release. I mean, say a fucking. I know this is kind of bad, but Call of Duty, for instance, even though the, the online is such an important part of that, if it had released and they told us, hey, it'd be a week or two before the online's fully functional, dude, people would catch the fucking shit for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. <clears throat> They'd just all probably boycott it and say, all right, we're not buying it until the online's up. Yeah. Exactly, but, but interesting enough, I have not heard anything like that whatsoever with GTA. I, th I think it's because, uh, I think it was around a month, maybe even two, they, they came out and said, look, online's not ready yet, you're going to get it a couple of weeks after launch. And they're telling people way in advance. Yeah, when, uh, when they initially came out with that, is that did people throw a fit about it? Or? Uh, th there, was some, there was some negative uh, people. It was, it was just a standard, oh, what the fuck, I'm not buying this boycott. Rah, guaranteed they still bought it day one. 
<laughs> yeah, they're well done. I mean, I still... think it's because it's a sandbox game, really. You know, there's a lot of things to do. It's like, even if you silver medal or gold, uh, bronze medal a mission, you still have the opportunity to go back and play it and yeah, you know, improve your ability. So there is a lot more than in Call of Duty where it's, you know, pretty much as soon as you've done that mission, you just carry on forward. A yeah. lot of people don't have the int- attention span to keep playing the same level of Call of Duty, whereas with GTA Five, you can go in, you can drive around the huge map, you can play golf, tennis, you know, go to the strip club if you're that way inclined and whatever. Some so, big ass titties. <laughs> <clears throat> that's just me though. That's just my opinion. You guys may. Yeah, disagree that's, that. that's completely valid. I mean, with like I said, with sandbox games, there is a shit ton of things to do, and with GTA. It's the most I've ever seen in any sandbox game. There might be more in others. If anybody knows, comment, definitely. I mean, I know Cody won't have got far in the game because they've just been in the script club looking at those tig old biddies. <laughs> um, I mean, one thing I am absolutely loving about GTA 5, I've got to say, and I'm, I'm guessing we've all seen them all over YouTube recently, is how many Easter eggs they've thrown in. Absolutely love Easter eggs in games, so it's a, sort of a a dream come true sort of me for a game where I'm just loving all these Easter eggs and this this whole big thing still going on and the whole thing they did with the um, blueprint map with the UV light to actually see all these secrets. Yeah, well, it was so cool. Yeah, I know that one of the ones I've seen recently that somebody found was one in a, of a clap trap in a in a. Yeah, uh, junkyard or something. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I think speaking of GTA, I mean, we're all talking crazy and things, but um, is there anything like you've all been let down by? I mean, my main thing so far has been the I got excited to go to the cinema and watch all these pretty funny movies that Rockstar have put together, but there's only been one so far that I've watched and actually found funny, and it was sort of an animated one of uh, the loneliest robot in Great Britain. It was just sat there ripping on uh, British stereotype. I love that film, I must admit. The, With the, the whole, the robot who, you know, the pleasure robot, was it? Or the pleasure droid? Yeah. I was not expecting that bit one bit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm going to save it for when we talk about what we've been playing regarding yeah. GTA Five, Because after this, I may not exist anymore, because I think Pitchforks and... Uh, <laughs> Things are going to come out personally for me. Probably. <laughs> got to, now you've said that and you mentioned something before the podcast, I think I've, an, I've got a feeling where you're going with that. <laughs> you, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> I'm, sm- I'm smelling some Saints Row 4 here. Oh, ah, well, yeah, you'll have to see when awesome, we get to that yeah. section. Yeah, it is. Uh, what, what, what's next, Joe? What's next on this podcast? Um, well, I won't even say podcast, it's a fucking orgy. <laughs> orgy cast with <laughs> PWB. Um, well, we were going to talk about uh, Pokemon X and Y being two weeks from now. I guess we can go into that. Yeah, that's oh. what I'm talking about. See, now with X and Y, I went through this conversation with a friend the other week. And they've gone back to the old school with the colours just red and blue. And... Personally, I'm going Pokemon X just because it's blue, and I played Pokemon Blue back in the day, and I think it's going to be the same way. A lot of people ever play Red, they're going to go Y just because yeah. of that nostalgia feeling. But also the 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 actual 3DS consoles have been released early before the game. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that's that's strange. strange. And uh, yeah, that, I mean they look really nice, but personally. I can't be bothered with trading my 3DS in to get another 3DS. All I'm going to do is just take that one apart and paint it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I got one. It's <laughs> it's a red one, but it's not at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, I'm real forward to Pokemon X and Y, especially. Oh, it's just it it looks like it's gone back to to Pokemon, really. Yeah, it's obviously, they They've stolen from Digimon with Mega Evolutions and shit, but who cares? They were yeah. cool, and they've added it into a cool fucking game. RPG, just please, anybody with an action replay, fucking jump off a cliff, you're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. 
Um, Pokemon, I've been a huge, huge fan of Pokemon since day one. Um, played every single one of them. Loved them except for a certain one which was Black and White 2. That felt like a really cheap shoe-in expansion. Um, but, yeah, I know what you mean, X and Y, but I think with everyone, when a new Pokemon game comes out, if you were about, uh, as a kid when Pokemon started, it always brings out the kid in you. You always get hyped for it. And this time, it's given us the main thing we've all waited from since day one, once uh, N64 and stuff came out. Finally, a 3D Pokemon game. Um, yes. As soon as I saw that trailer, I looked forward to jumping for joy. I was nearly fucking crying. So that's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Crying. It, it, it's meant <laughs> to make you happy, not upset. <laughs> I'm <laughs> one of the He's crying with joy. Exactly. Out of all three eyes. <laughs> see now, nah, see now. Nah. I would say this is a family show, but it's fucking far from it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the conversations we were having before we recorded, this is definitely not a family show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Tomo? Whose fault was that? Yours. You're the one that looked it up after my joke. And we're not going to go into details. So no. sure, mouth was it me? <laughs> what about you, Joe, with Pokemon? Are you looking forward to it? Um, I actually had gotten out of Pokemon for quite a while, but I, I have <gasps> recently... Yeah, yeah, I'm recently, in the last few years, have gotten back into it, <laughs> and I am going to be getting... Um, even though I started with Red, I'm going to be getting X, because I never had a blue version. I'm going to get in both eventually, but I'm going to start with X. Ah, am I the only person getting Y? Pretty much. I, I sort of always with the Pokemon games, I've gone on which Pokemon on the front of the cover looked cool. See, some people do that. I mean, I'm, I know uh, a, a girl that plays Pokemon that I went to school with her, we used, used to play Pokemon and stuff like that, and I remember when I went to go and pick up, uh, were it Diamond and Pearl? No, in fact, they were black and white when it first came out, and I was waiting outside Game Station, and she turned up, I'd not seen her in about five years, and I'm like, oh, cool, which one are you getting? And she was like, that one, because it looks awesome. But yeah, it's uh, it's funny how Pokemon's just universally loved. I mean, Liam, uh, I don't think you've got a 3DS, or have you got one now? I do, bro, I do. And are, are you going to be joining Pokemon X and Y madness? Eventually. Eventually, I need to get back into the hype. Really, I stopped playing after Leaf Green and Fire Red, you know, properly. Oh yeah. I did. I did pick up the black version. Yeah. You know, when Game, Game Station doing that huge trade and everything. Oh yeah. And I just fell out of love with it. Now, I, I can understand where you're coming from. Black and white. It it fell. I mean, black and white one and two. They just fell like a slog. It it felt forced. It weren't in, it weren't that enjoyable. It was enjoyable at the beginning, but then you just think, fuck you. I think another one of the great things I've shown about this one, I'm guessing you're excited for as well, Chris, is we can finally, eventually in the game, pick up the three original starters. Oh yes, oh yes. I mean, the, the one thing... Uh, well, it's, it's not a concern because they've always done it in every Pokemon. You've always, you've always been able to carry them forward from previous generations. Um, you can carry your Pokemon forward from black and white 1 and 2 into Pokemon X and Y through, I think they're doing a premium, premium cloud storage service. I'm not sure on a price, but I mean, that's a good idea, to be honest. And with that, you're probably going to be paying for their servers. Yeah. Even though it's a cloud storage, you're probably going to be paying for online servers, so you're going to get less less disconnections because on the DS Pokemons you always got disconnections and it was just garbage I mean something else that I've just thought about as well now is uh, this is the first time with a Pokemon game that can give it actual DLC so I wonder if they are going to keep pumping us with new content see now that is interesting I never actually thought about that DLC with the 3DS obviously it happens Fire Emblem look at how much DLC that's got and yeah, they, to be honest, they could just... They don't have to release another Pokemon game. All they have to release is areas and new Pokemon as DLC. Charge 10, 15 quid for a new area with 50 new Pokemon. They'll be raking it in. There's only eight more badges. Yeah, it, it's, it's, that, it's that simple. What about you, the mighty bearded coder? Are you into Pokemon? Okay, so here's... <laughs> Here's, here's my brief relationship with Pokemon. Obviously, when it first came out, I was huge into red, and I still have my original red card. Nice. And I, I busted out 
probably once every couple of years, and I try to do a playthrough of it. I don't always make it to the end. Um, but after Red came out, like that's that's I played that for for a few years, um, and I never really bought another one until Platinum came around, and I played Platinum and kind of revitalized my love for Pokemon. And I'm sorry, I didn't buy it; I rented it from GameFly. Um, and when it was time to send it back, Heart of Gold and Soul Silver were getting ready to come out. So I was like, shit, I'm just going to go buy the newest versions of them. I bought both of those. And for whatever reason, it just didn't have the same charm to me. So I tried to play it for a little bit, and then I gave up on it. And I just I couldn't do it again. Um, I picked up Black black and uh, White 2 because um, they were like super cheap. I bought like 15 bucks a piece. Nice. Um, but I, I couldn't get into those either. So I don't know, man. Um, I think... I think the only way I'm going to get back into Pokemon is if they do a full-fledged console release. Like, if they if they did a, a Pokemon in the vein of Monster Hunter on the Wii U, oh, I think I would, I, would, I would be all over that, and I'd probably play the shit out of that it. That would be amazing, but I doubt that's ever going to happen. That sh- we can dream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they... <laughs> well, did anyone actually see the... Um, I think it was TGS or somewhere... Uh, in Japan, they showed a video where it was Pikachu walking through past all the old Pokemon games. At the end, it showed one screenshot of a new 3D style Pokemon game with Lucario and another Pokemon I can't remember, and that looked amazing. So I'm wondering what lies. And if it ends up being another battle, if it's another battle yeah, revolution, that, I'm gonna fucking cry. It's more than likely gonna be Z because I mean, come on, there's three axes to the 3D, and there's always a third yeah. version. Well, what they showed is it's an actual Wii U title. But, yeah, we'll have to see what they bring with it. I mean, the thing is, it's not the first time. It wouldn't be the first time we've ever seen a Pokemon title on a console. And I grant the console releases of N64 want a full-fledged, yeah. you know, title or the Wii or anything like that. But I don't know I don't know what Game Freak's doing. Why, why can't they do that? Uh, it's like the closest ones we've got have been Colosseum and Gale of Darkness on the GameCube. But I think it's the whole thing of the keeping Pokemon to the handouts for the sake of going around with it in your pocket like... Like a Pokeball, I guess. Uh, so I'll just keep it like that. Pocket yeah, monsters. That, yeah, that's it. It's pocket monsters, isn't it? You keep them in your pocket. I mean, I know Cody's got big ass pockets, so he carry around the Wii U gamepad. <laughs> 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 Going next to his big brass balls. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those little Pikachu kind of like styled handhelds that they used to have where you could clip onto your belt? It came with like little cartridges you could play on the move and everything, and it used oh, to. Like, yeah, I remember seeing that. I wish they'd release that again. Yeah, yeah still got awesome. Um, do you remember with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you had the Poké Walker? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I were addicted to that thing. That thing came attached to me everywhere. See now that they could implement that in the 3DS just because it's got a pedo meter in it. <laughs> yeah. The, the step, yeah. Well, I mean, here, here's another thought, too. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a big Wii U fan, and I'd like to see it be successful. I mean, with things like the latest Pokemon Rumble, it's got the little NFC characters. Why why don't they do something in vain of, uh, of Skylanders, the Pokemon? Haven't they just done something like that with that, um, the one yeah. where the Pokemon are toys, and you can buy certain ones as actual physical toys? Yeah, it's well, the, the, the Wii U Rumble one. You can buy toys, and you put them on your gamepad. Yeah, that's that's what I'm referring to. But make it into that, make it into an actual Pokemon game, where like instead of going to your menu and throwing out a Pokeball, you know, swap characters. You just throw it your Wii U game. <laughs> I mean, throw it your TV. Tell tell me that wouldn't be a money pit. Tell me that, they that wouldn't would make be shit fucking money. awesome. Uh, to be honest, what they could do, just to make it that much more awesome, really. Well, the cam, the Wii U gamepad camera has already got it. A camera on the front, so you just throw, sure. you just throw like a soft ball that's got sensors in it past the Wii U gamepad, so it's like you're throwing the Pokeball out into battle. That would be fucking yeah. awesome, and you shout the attack because that'd it's be got awesome. a microphone as well. I think the only problem would be having to get up off your couch every two seconds to re-pick up the ball. That's well, right, that, a whole mess of them. Well, it should. They could have it sort of like on an elastic band thing that's attached to your wrist. I guess that's perfect, or a retractable thing like a dog lead. Shit. Should we? Should we email uh, Game Freak and say, "Nah, them bitches, let's do this." <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, what about Pokemon-styled Skylanders? Yeah, Cody just said that. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, 
Right. I'm back to what we were looking at earlier. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> they should. Uh, speaking of that, anyway, like the whole Skylanders thing and Pokemon, they could do it, but just make you know the Mystery Dungeon games. Just make one of those as a 3D one on Wii U, and then they've got more toys to sell them. Those Mystery Dungeon games are so good. I want the 3DS one. I've still not played the 3DS one. I've played a few of the DS ones, and well, I've played play the advanced the ones. Play the demo of the 3DS one because your stats carry over into the full game. Oh, I'll download that tonight. Well, what, what if they what if they did this too? I mean, exact same thing they did with Monster Hunter. They had a portable and a you know console like version that kind of worked together. I think that'd be fucking cool. Yeah, I mean, you could literally, literally play on the console and then take back over on the handheld when you want to go. Exactly. That's the awesome. that, that's the, the, that, the, that would get me back in the book. It's like if they brought Z, uh, Pokemon Z out, or Z, or whatever they want to call it, um, but made that the Wii U one, and just made the exact same world, just in Wii U graphics. Oh, perfect. And then you can transfer data in between X and Y. Between... Uh, why? Game Freak, why you now do this? Uh, I, I'm sad now. I feel sad. Because they're busy making <laughs> Pokemon out of ice cream cones. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway... <laughs> Pokemon ice cream bars. I'm sure we could talk about Pokemon for days just because of how many years of experience we've all had with it. But the next thing we're talking about is one ugly motherfucker, and I ain't talking about Moosh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Steam controller. What the fuck oh. is that? I'd, I want it. But it's ugly as sin. What the fuck is it? Yeah. As soon as I saw an, an image of that, all I thought was, well, well, that's my face buttons. I mean, we... we Masterpiece. See, nah, the PC gamers, hardcore ones, it, Cody is one of them. That master is. <laughs> that master no, not really. No, no, no to, be, to be honest, I, I'm a PC gamer and this looks like the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. I, d I don't understand. I mean, have you guys seen, like... If, if you type in Steam Control into Steam, I mean, I'm going to paste it to you now on Skype, and it shows a guy who's, like, binded Portal 2 to it. Yeah, that's the one, Cody. And uh, I don't... I don't... Why is there no analog stick? Why is it a touchpad? No! Rage. See, here's the thing. I, I, I think Gabe was drunk when they came up with this. I think Gabe got fucking uh, molested to do that. <laughs> this. Now, now, here's the thing. The coolest thing about this whole controller is the concept that they want it to be moddable. They have come out and said this is hackable from the get-go. Yeah. So but, I, th I think people are going to easily put um, analog sticks on this. Yeah. But looking at that picture, the diagram of the Portal 2 bindings, or if you look at, at like an angle photo of this, it, it just, it doesn't look right. It looks like the convex and the, the just design of the controller's ass backwards. Yeah. Like, I'm, it just looks uncomfortable. I mean, I'm looking at it, and it, it gives me a headache, but it intrigues me. Just like the Wii U gamepad did when I first saw that. I initially thought, what the fuck is that? And then when I've got it, I've held it. Oh, so nice. Such a nice yeah. piece of kit to hold. And I'm hoping this is going to be the same with the Steam mm. controller. I mean, it looks easy enough for them to just uh, sell a third-party peripheral that you just attach to the top of those two disc things to turn them into analog sticks. But uh, by the size of them, they'll be probably pretty big-ass analog sticks. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. They're supposed to be trackpads with analog nubs even work on that? Uh, find a way to put some underneath it. Oh, I want to say they did find something. Uh, I mean, what, what, what do you think about the Steam controller, Brian? Weird. <laughs> that is no, that it's, simple. It's, weird. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy, but I am looking forward to getting my hands on it. Even the See what it does. Have we got any idea on price? There's nothing at the moment. It can't be much. Um, it's like silly on price. It's cheap. I'm guessing they'll throw it at 50 quid. Just a bit of dicks. Yeah, I'm thinking about the like controllers these days. Controllers that are yeah. Right yeah, they're expensive. But let me say, when you first look at it, it looks like some form of iPod docking station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it really does now. Now I'm looking at it like. I don't think it looks that bad. <laughs> well, it ain't got Apple on it, so it's not. It's, <laughs> we, we know it's not going to be four million pound. 
<laughs> but yeah, I'm, I hate the look of it, just like I did with the Wii U gamepad, and I'm hope I'm, I hope I'm pleasantly surprised. Now, in terms of PC gaming, Liam is trying to get himself in onto the PC scene, get into PC gaming. Are we any step closer to that, Liam? We are. We are incredibly close, my friend. I have a holiday next week, and then after that, the part should be here, should be all built, and it's a no for the Steam controller for me, since I've never played Steam so far, but to me, as you guys have already said, it looks pretty horrible. Yeah. So yeah, it looks, it would be having small hands. Yeah, exactly. It's like you could buy a 360 controller and probably still map that better. And by the looks of it as well, me having small hands, it looks like it's going to be too big for me to hold. <laughs> it's it's the comfortably original anyway. Xbox controller all over again. I had, to I had to climb up on that thing. See, the original Xbox controller, I mean, I haven't got big hands, but the original Xbox controller felt nice. If I felt like I was holding just something that could do some damage if somebody broke into my house. <laughs> <laughs> True that. Oh, that's enough of the Steam controller. Shall we get on to games we've been playing? I'm going to go last on this one, just because, yeah, <laughs> pitch folks at the ready. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know what it is? That's yeah, I know thing. you already know what it is, because I've already been ranting to you earlier today. But uh, do you want to start us off, Joe? What have you been playing lately, apart from with your balls? <laughs> Um, I actually started um, American McGee's Alice because it came as free DLC for Madness Returns. So ah, I awesome wanna, game. I want to play uh, play that, but when I was playing it, it doesn't feel like it ported over well to a controller scheme. It no? just kind of felt kind of clunky. I, I don't know. I haven't got very far into it yet, though. I um, agree with that. And what, the two games I've been playing the most of, most recently, those I've, um, I'm about near the end of Yakuza Dead Souls, which is a, a great game. The controls, though, are very clunky when you first start playing them. I mean, it's like, what the fuck game? Exactly. And then after that, you just get used to it, and the game's a whole mess of fun. And I've sunk a lot of time into it. I've done all the submissions and everything. Uh, so, And then just recently, I bought uh, Knights of... Uh, pen and paper on Steam, and uh, it's very, very addictive. Uh, basically, you're playing a video game of people playing Dungeons and Dragons, and it's just freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, addictive. Nice, nice, a pen and paper is it's just one of those games you could just sit and play for hours. I played it on my mobile phone, and it's just yeah, it's wrong. I've run down my battery so many times. <laughs> awesome game though, and Yakuza Dead Souls out. <sighs> Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. Shitty controls, but awesome game. You get past yeah. the controls and get used to it. It's it's just a, it's a fun game. Yeah. Well, are, the, are the controls the same as Yakuza Three on Fox? I played both of them and I'll find them. I'm there. Uh, yeah, the, it's it's the same gun controls because it's all about fucking killing zombies and shit. But yeah, right. it's, it's the same gun controls, just clunky. Right. I get you. Know. I've it's like. This is the first Yakuza I've ever played, actually. You should try 3 and 4. I want to now, but... So in 3, you don't have to play 1 and 2, because um, if you go to the options of 3, there's like a whole cinematic two-hour thing that shows you what happened in 1 and 2. Oh, wow. See, there you go. You don't even have to buy 1 and 2. I'd buy them anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, in 1 and 2, get an HD release. That'd be nice. Is it? I'm, I'm sure that... Oh, fucking hell, I think it was mon months ago I read this. If it is, I'll buy that. Because, I mean, to me, the Yakuza series has always been sort of the closest I'm going to get to a new Shenmue. Yeah. It's um, supposed to be coming out at the same time as Yakuza 5 or around Yakuza 5. Something like that. Anyway, uh, been playing anything else, anything else, Joe, or is that it? That's pretty much it. Now, what about you, Liam? What have you been playing? Predominantly, I've been playing, as probably everyone else, GTA V. And I'm going to come out straight and say this. I still prefer Vice City to GTA V. Oh, of course. Vice City is awesome. You know, it, it's the 80s. You know, the music was... To me, 80s was the best decade for music anyway, so that's probably what draws me in so much. 
Yeah. But the whole open world, you know, being able to play three characters, going out with your friends and everything, or the other characters, not your friends, it is pretty good. As I said, the map is really nice and large, and I've just met Trevor. <laughs> nice, nice. And not to spoil anything for anybody, but as most of you probably know, Trevor is fat crap crazy. He's fucking awesome. He's the right amount of crazy that I would let him have a beer and then rape me afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Mostly been playing golf and tennis, as you do. Took part in a couple of triathlons as well. Those are funny. The, the first one was fine. The second one phew, took me about four times to do. Really? Craziness. Great. Uh, you know, it... it the first one was like, you know, you could walk it really, couldn't you? Against the AI, it was like, just yeah, going to casually easy, walk. Yeah. The second one, I was like, where the hell are these people coming from? <laughs> I came like fifth or something. I kept coming like third, fourth, fifth. And then the last one I tried, this was like three o'clock in the morning. I came twelfth. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell, what has happened here? Now, that would be mm. awesome if they, tri- if they got triathlon events online. They are going to be online. Be- <sighs> So, see, I'd just do them all day. You pay an entry fee, obviously, because at the minute they're all free, the ones that I've noticed that we've been able to do. Yeah. But, like, pay $50 of your in-game money, like, go along with 200 people, that'd be epic. Ah, uh, that big fucking cross-country Los Santos triathlon. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Sounds that, good, doesn't it, lads? Sounds that, good. That would be the shit. What about you, Cody? Epic beard time. Come on, throw us what you've been playing. Well, I play a little bit of everything because I'm so... I, just, I don't know, I can't play more than one game in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, we know this. <laughs> but I, I played a little bit of GTA Five. I'm not very far into it. I think I'm only like 5.5%. Um, not to ruin anything, which I know it's not going to ruin anything. But I'm at the point where I just I lost my yacht going down the highway. Ah, oh, that mission was hilarious. <laughs> so, so they, that tells you anything. I'm not very far into it, uh, but I've been playing that a little bit. I've been playing a little bit of Diablo three on PS three. Um, still playing a shit ton of Black Ops two. I don't know why I still play that game. I just it's like a it's like a, a craving. I have to do it now. I don't enjoy it. Anymore, but I have to do it. Uh, I picked up Pinball FX two on Steam with all the DLC, and I'm loving. it. Loving the shit out of it. I played it on PS3. Um, I didn't play it that much, but now that I have it on the PC, I've been streaming it quite a bit more. Nice. Uh, and it's it's fun just doing high school challenges. That's something I want to start doing with the community, get people involved with. And then last but not least, I said I wasn't going to do it. I didn't want to do it, but I caved and bought Final Fantasy XIV. Yay! Yay! And we all rejoice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And I love it, dude. It's it's amazing. Um, it's really starting to light my fire for new modes again. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to play it after my my free trial expires. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it month by month or buy like a six or a year month period or whatever. What are options they have? Yeah. Uh, uh, because it, it I kind of it came out at a bad time. I mean, honestly, with next gen just right around the corner, and I've got so much shit coming from next gen. Uh, <laughs> It's not even going to be funny. So I can't really see myself finding the time to play an MMO uh, when i got all this new stuff coming up. Nice, nice. Uh, what that's, about... That's basically it. Yeah, but that's nice. I, I'm glad you uh, you picked up Final Fantasy XIV. Did you manage to get on Shiva? So I, I managed to, to get a character on Shiva, um, but every time I've tried to log in, I, I keep getting either kicked out or saying there's too many people. So I haven't really tried the last few times I've played it. I've just been hopping on Titan and uh, loving that character. I think I'm up to 15 or 16 now. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's just mm. another person getting onto that game, which is just awesome. I love it. I really need to get back to playing it, which I'm going to. Cause I'm, yeah. What, what we need to do is we all ought to re-roll a new character at the same time on the same server. And just stream it and just have like a community gameplay. You know, we'll have to wait till I get it. Mm. We'll be waiting until 2016. 
Okay, fine. I'll wait. <laughs> Twenty for me. I will, I'll wait till 2016 to buy it. Now, it's just you. Uh, I'll buy it. Go. Oh, by the way, the servers are shutting down tomorrow. <laughs> Rob. Awesome. What? What about you, Brian? What's uh? What? What you been? What have you been playing today? Well, not oh, just thanks. today. Just recently. Nah, mate, John. Don't fuck well, you. Obviously, like everyone else, GTA Five. I played. Uh, actually finished that. Uh, did a few of the activities. I actually found myself driving around being a taxi driver more than anything for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no idea for that. And I've been uh, doing the skydiving things. They're uh, quite fun. Um, other games I've been playing Diablo 3. Uh, I brought Cody here. actually bought it for me, which is a massive thanks for that. And nice. It's it's mapped perfect, perfectly well for consoles. The controls are perfect. They got rid of the uh, auction house, which was a which part people were seeing as a massive problem and stuff. But now, yeah, let, it's... let me ask you this, Brian. You and I are both PC players. In the outlook. Yep. I'm hearing so many players, even even some of my friends like Biggie Mac, for instance, who is a diehard PC player, saying that. This is the best version of the game that they'll never go back to the PC. Now, me, on the other hand, I I still I think I prefer the PC version. Uh, that's just one of those games that I think plays better with keyboard and mouse. What's your opinion on the matter? Uh, uh, to be honest, I'd have to agree with Piggy Mac. It's, uh, the, the console version is actually web, web -er. I mean, just the whole feel... The stuff that I did, that you could actually do a combat role and all that stuff to get out of the way quicker. Um, just hard to know. I mean, I had a few frame rate. It, it would drop a little bit. Well, on that, it's, it's just perfect and actually does look a little bit better. Interesting. Okay. What else have you been playing, Bry? I haven't played a lot. But I played a little of Kingdom Hearts HD. Nice. And what I played of it, I, I actually would say that it's probably the best HD version to come out of, well, collection of games to come out. And I thought Metal Gear Solid was the... Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it looks beautiful. It, it plays a lot better than what I... You know, when I first ever played it, I didn't really get into it when it first came out, but I'm glad to, you know, go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. And I've got quite a few, so... <laughs> um, I played Saints Row 4. Absolutely insane, hilarious game. It's just insane. And the uh, added superpowers is amazing. And uh, then we go on to a game that I'm actually not liking at the moment, but I'm forcing myself through it. Is the community going to slap you? Probably not as much as they're going to slap you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Split Cell Blacklist. Right, okay. Now, I, I liked the other Split Cells, not as much as everyone else. Obviously, I'm more of a Metal Gear Solid fan. But I did enjoy them. Uh, Double Agent was probably the last best one for me. Conviction didn't really, you know. But Blacklist, the, to me, the gameplay was just... It just, it just plays on its own half the time. I mean, some anti just jump over a barrier for no reason or climb up a ladder half the time getting me caught. The AI can be stupid, walking into walls and getting caught on the side of a car that you could easily walk past anyway. Uh, the start, I will say the story is kind of interesting. It, it does have certain gripping moments, but other than that, it's just kind of bland. And I haven't played online, so I can't comment on that. But, yeah, that's barely it. <laughs> Right, so we're on to Moosh before Jesus' my ass is sweating with what I'm about to say after Moosh has told. 
Uh, right, what have I played this week? Uh, well, first, obviously, same as everyone else in the world, apart from Joe. Uh, been playing, <laughs> been playing GTA Five. Um, got myself stupidly hyped for it, and the hype was worth it. Loved ninety nine percent of the game, apart from the actual soundtrack. Well, the soundtrack, like in game when you're in missions and stuff, I've liked that. That's been different and good. But the actual radios have been with me. But yeah, apart from that, great game. Love every character, the storytelling was really well done. Absolutely adore Trevor, and now um, Trevor's taking over Bass from Far Cry 3, he's my favourite nut job character. Um, and that's it, waiting for GTA Online for that. Um, next thing I've played is, thanks to Chris dragging me through into this for ages going on about it, uh, Realm Reborn. Mm. Absolutely adore it, falling in love with it. Um, the graphics on it are just beautiful for an MMO. Um, it's nice to have the old, like, far fancy world and things thrown into an MMO and enjoying that. Uh, not much to say really about it apart from uh, I love the whole thing is I don't have to play six million different characters to try out every aspect of the game. So, you know, yeah. that's, one, that's one thing I forgot to mention is that this game looks phenomenal. Like, for an MMO and its open world as an MMO is, the graphics on this game is just fucking amazing. Yeah, and something else I love about it as well um, is uh, every other MMO I've played, at some point I've had to sit and grind. I've not had to grind once on this. Or oh, whatever I've done has not felt like grinding, so... Well done, Square Enix, and can't, see, well, uh, can't wait to see what they're bringing later updates. Um, what else have I played? Uh, I picked up another system again for the third time now. Um, I bought another 3DS, so um, <laughs> I mean, my first one I sold because there wasn't much coming out for it because I got it around launch. The second one I sold, uh, once again, there weren't many games I was playing, but as soon as I sold that, everything else started hitting, like the Mario RPG and things like that. So I bought one again, uh, this time I got an Animal Crossing version, just because I got it at a decent deal. So I've got, uh, finally got Animal Crossing New Leaf to jump into, which is my first ever Animal Crossing. but. Not a chance myself to play it yet, because the missus has kind of stolen it. Uh, what else have I played? I picked up Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D for it. Um, Donkey, Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns, I loved on the Wii. And thought that was awesome, so playing that, and it looks amazing on the 3DS. Just the same, it's at 30 frames instead of 60, which you can feel, especially on like the minecart levels. Um, not played anything else on the 3DS, but I do have Star Fox 3D to finally play, it, and I'll be picking up Pokemon for it when that comes out in two weeks. Uh, Blacklist, uh, I did pick up that, Splinter Cell Blacklist, and I'm totally on the other side of the fence than Brian is with it. Um, so far, I've not seen any problems with it, really, like, as in glitches or AI problems have been fine. Uh, my only issue with it so far is Sam Fisher's voice, it just sounds like generic American action hero now instead of uh, Michael Ironside doing his voice. I played a bit of the online with uh, Paul Fox on 88, and we've enjoyed that immensely, but the difficulty is quite ramped up to be unfair, I think you'd put it, um, with the co-op, and I've not played much of the actual competitive multiplayer, but what I've played, it is pretty fun. And I think that's pretty much all I've played over the past month. So, yeah, what about you, Chris? Oh, is it really? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's you. I'm looking yeah. forward to this. Let me just sit back and get comfortable. Well, Let me just get my pitchfork. Uh, to be honest, I'm making it sound worse than what it is, but I'm, I'm going to make it the last thing to mention, basically. I mean, games I've been playing, I've been trying to play Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Survivor, Overclockers, or Overclocked on the 3DS, and my god. That is the worst SMT game I have ever played. It is fucking boring <laughs> graphically <laughs> it's awesome voice acting yeah it's okay battle system strategy rpg standard persona things combining them um, all that sort of stuff the music jesus fucking christ it's so obnoxious anybody who likes this soundtrack you need to get your ears checked really it's fucking horrible and it's just the main thing that i hate which is why you'd play an RPG is the story. It's just shit. It's just it's just boring. And 
before, maybe if this were five years ago, I would have played it all the way and just hated every minute of it. But now, I don't have the time for it anymore. If a, if a game pisses me off that much, I'm writing it off. So that game, I'm actually getting rid of it tomorrow. Is that the one that plays like Project X Zone in a way? <laughs> no, plays nothing like Project X Zone. Fucking hell. God, don't say that. <laughs> no, it's it's it's, a, it's just a strategy RPG. Take your turns, fight enemies, get get enemies through the auction house, which is in game. Um, I mean, another thing that pisses me off with it is any enemy that you come across, whether it's new, well, any new enemy, you instantly see their weakness. You see what they're weak against. You don't have to do any abilities. You don't have to do. You don't have to have any special monsters, any special equipment. You just see what their weakness is, so you can just say, right, I'll have this monster that kicks ass against his weakness and just exploit it, and it's just... Now, that really annoys me. But, yeah, Shin Megami Tensai, Devil Survivor Overclockers... I, no, I hate it. Sorry for people that like it, but no, I absolutely hate it. Uh, other game I've been playing... Well, actually finished, finally was, I finished it last month, but I was busy so I couldn't come on the podcast, um, was Project Cross Zone on the 3DS. Now this game looks amazing, sounds amazing, plays very repetitive, extremely repetitive, which I don't mind. I play MMOs, they're as repetitive as they come. But uh, it's a game where nothing happens for 40 hours, and even when you do get an explanation... It's still nothing, and yeah, I think it was just made just to get a bit of money for Namco, Bandai, Sega, and all the Monolith. I think it was Monolith. I can't remember exactly, uh, but yeah, it's. Did I enjoy the game immensely? I, I think I finished it at around the fifty-seven hour mark, so it's a long game as well. But would I recommend it to people? No. How does that make sense? Can anybody make sense of that? Oh, I, oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Each to their own. Exactly. I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't recommend it. And it's a really hard thing to explain, and I've been trying to figure it out ever, ever since I finished it. I won't recommend people to play it. I just... Yeah. If you can, get a, mod, uh, get a PS2 emulator, or get a... A mod chip or something that allows you to play imports or backups and get the English version of Namco Cross Capcom because that is a much better game because Project Cross Zone is the, the sequel to that funnily enough which a lot of people never knew Namco Cross Capcom existed uh, what else have we been playing I've just started Fire Emblem nice. the away and that it's awesome. I, 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 I cannot, I cannot get over how good it is. The graphics on it are so good. The cutscenes, Jesus Christ, they rival next gen cell shaded games. Is that good? The strategy elements of it are so fucking deep, and the only way to play that game is hardcore. When someone dies, they die. I love that. I absolutely love that. None of this going to a church to revive. You've died on the battlefield, so you're dead. Absolutely brown bread. I love it. I've played about three... In fact, I've just unlocked the wireless capabilities, so I've bought about two and a half, three hours in. Something, I mean, I'm, something uh, like that. I'm not a big person. Like, I'm not big into Fire Emblem. I don't know too much about it, but at all Fire Emblem games, like uh, once they die, they're dead. Yes, this is actually the first one ever to introduce a casual mode where you, you, they don't die, they're just out of battle until the next one. But if you play the regular mode, and then like all the other Fire Emblems before, your characters die, they're dead. Uh, and uh, that actually gives a lot of strategy to the game if you think about it, because you can develop, in this game, you develop relationships between different characters, and it gives them stat boosts. Also, uh, you can marry your characters off. Eventually, which will have uh, 
kids from the future who come and that gives you other units and that can customize their skill sets by having certain skill sets on the parent units. There's so much stuff to do. I put over 60 hours into the game myself. So yeah, it's awesome. I can't, I can't wait to get further into it. It's an awesome game. Yeah, definitely. Fire Emblem. Recommend it to anybody. Even if you're not a strategy RPG fan, just to play it is that good. Um, picked up Kingdom Hearts HD. Massive Kingdom Hearts fan. Yeah, it is one of the best HD collections I have seen today. It actually is HD. It's not just upscaled. They've really taken the game back and rebuilt it back up because I've actually come because with the PS2 emulator you can play a game in HD and I say that in inverted commas because it just upscales the resolution it doesn't do the textures or anything like that and yeah it's a massive jump if you look at Final Fantasy X HD the difference is what they've done they've done the exact same with Kingdom Hearts and yeah absolutely fantastic I've only played about an hour of the HD collection but yeah I absolutely love it the next Diablo 3 I got it on the PC day one and it's always felt a chore to play on the PC I don't know why what? <laughs> that's, me. that's pitch you guys perfect. Are killing me. <laughs> See, that that sounds strange considering I probably sunk in around four hundred hours into Diablo two. And I think it's the fact I'm getting older, I can't be asked to sit up in a chair, keyboard and mouse, hours, hours, hours on end anymore. I want to sit back with a controller, cup of coffee next to me and just chill and play. That's that's my thing with Diablo three. I'm not saying it wasn't a bad was a bad game on the PC. It wasn't far from it. It was a really no. Oh, it is a really good fucking game. I'm not doubting that. My brother picked up the PS3 version. He was telling me about it, and I was thinking it can't be as good as he's saying. Surely it really can't. So I ended up picking it up, and my god, Blizzard. Why, why could you not just patch in the controller? That's all I wanted. I didn't care about the auction house. All I wanted was controller support. The dodge thing is nice. Very nice. Because it has got me out of a few sticky situations so far. But yeah. The console version of Diablo. If you're in two minds whether to play a PC or console. Play the console version. It's, it's that simple. It is that simple. And I'm talking to you Cody. Just. Smash your I, PC, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know where viewers' PC is right now. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. But yeah, the Diablo 3 console version, definitely. I recommend it to anybody, especially if you're a hack and slash dungeon crawler fan. It's just awesome. It really is. The coolest thing about Diablo 3 console is the fact that it has local multiplayer. Oh yes, now nah, that you don't see it anymore. The fact that it's no. just m- local multiplayer. Get some friend round, get some beers, get some snacks. Cause havoc on Diablo. Fucking awesome. You really can't fault that. Oh no, this is the part I'm being dreading because I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, and it's not through. It's just personal taste. So if anybody says that I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. It's just what I. That's what it's. Uh, I kind of agree. Yeah. What I said because really I kind of agree. With what said. Yeah. Th- this uh, basically GTA Five. Everybody's been playing it. Oh fucking! Hell, I'm I'm making the shit up in here. <laughs> uh, yeah. GTA Five. Everybody's been playing it. I've been playing it. Got it. Absolutely love the game. Fantastic. Shooting mechanics very easy. So you. So I turned them to the more difficult ones. They were still quite easy. Graphically, amazing. Soundtrack, I'm not keen on the radio stations. There's a few decent tracks I can... Yeah, there's a few decent ones. But I'm not really fussed. To be honest, Rockstar's ambient soundtrack when you don't have a radio station on better than most. But that's just me. 
the with all GTA games, this is an outright statement from myself. Ever since GTA 3, I have never, ever, ever sat down and done everything on a GTA game. I got close on by City and San Andreas, but I just eventually got bored. Some people don't, they love it, and I will never do that. And it's not through not wanting to, it's just... I don't... They, these, are, these are the games to be playing, to be honest. And I will do the activities. Like I've done tennis, I've done golf, I've done the triathlons. Um, I've been in strip club, took a stripper home done some naughty things to her, close your ears, most you're too young for this. <laughs> uh, I picked up a prostitute, done all that stuff. I mean, to be honest, I'm surprised there hasn't been controversy regarding the strip club and the prostitute, just because the prostitutes, you don't see much, but you can see them, they, they jump on your lap, they bounce it up and down on your dick, they suck your dick and all that. With the strip club, yeah, you see strippers going around, but you can get a private dance, and what, it, it, get, it kind of shocked me after the controversy with hot coffee, if, and if you don't know what hot coffee is, research it, it's from San Andreas, what, what was originally going to be in it, but have a look at hot coffee, and as soon as you start, you just got this big pair of titties in your face, oh. and, and you just... Yeah, you can, you can grow. You can grow. Yeah, exactly. You can grow up a stripper, and you've got like a pleasure meter. You get that up, you take her home, you make you make her a nice uh, chocolate cake and a cup of tea. Finish up a jigsaw puzzle together, you know, classy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep it friendly. <clears throat> if if well, to be honest, Cody, you'd get arrested. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all that good stuff. One thing that annoyed me while playing GTA was, well, there was one thing, the assassination missions. They could have been done as a side mission. There was no need for them to be in the main story. That was lazy padding by Rockstar. Now, the main thing, I mean, I've been doing nothing but praising GTA. This is what spoiled it for me, and it's made me, f I finished it actually today earlier and this is what's made me feel deflated about the whole experience of gta the last mission i'm not going to say what it is yep for spoilers but the last mission mm -hmm. i felt so deflated i felt robbed i felt empty now with previous gta's the last mission has been a shit storm of just trying to fucking get away and half the time you don't get away, but it's just awesome. GTA 5, uh, really, I just, it's, it's, when I did it, and when it did the last, like, cut scene before the credits rolled, I, I actually got really angry, I was just thinking, I just thought that is bullshit, absolute bullshit. You've done this fantastic game, and you're fucked. Personally, you fucked me all the with a bullshit ending. I hate it. I don't hate GTA. I just hate that it's done that. Now, GTA Online, I'll play it for a week, if that. To be honest, I'm I'm not as enthusiastic about sandbox games, and a lot of people are saying GTA Five, Saints Row Four, all this. GTA Five copied Saints Row Four. Nah, you're probably thinking, how? Franklin, Trevor, Michael. They've all got powers. What the fuck? That's... Why? Why have they got powers? There's no need for it. There's absolutely no need for it. Saints Row's the stupid game, not GTA. So why have you given them bullet time? Fucking uh, excessive... Well, big... Re I can't even think. I'm, yeah, my mind's getting that muddled. Uh, like good reflexes for driving and also just a walking tank yeah I don't understand that but yeah for anybody who's listening who love GTA from start to finish 
wants to try and castrate me. I'm over there next to Cody's beard. Uh, come at me, bro. It's that simple. But yeah, GTA 5, it's, it's good. But personally, it is not the game of the year. It's not 10 out of 10. It, if I were to give it any rating, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. But that's just me, and I can already hear someone knocking at my door. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's heard me next door. Morning, Chris. But yeah, that's... It, it, it's annoying. It really is annoying. But yeah, that that's it for all I've been playing. I could go on, but I'm not going to, because, yeah, I've been ranting for the past five minutes, and that's not good. Anyway. Oh, yeah, we, uh, has anybody else got anything to add, or are we wrapping this up like a tight-ass Christmas present? Oh, I was just wondering, like, one more thing that was big over this past month that I just want everyone's sort of opinion on. Uh, what's everyone thinking on Steam, uh, the Steam OS? Uh, personally, hmm. I don't know. I, I, I want to use it before I even comment, to be honest. It's one of those things. I'd rather use it before I, I pass comment. I can't really say it's, it looks, it's a good idea or a bad idea, but yeah, that's just me. I, I feel personally that it's, it's useless. Uh, not that it's going to be a bad thing. I mean, it's going to be free, so no issues there, but it's just, it's just another version of a Linux distro for uh, you know, for the big screen. However, you can do that with a standard Steam uh, for Linux distro anyhow. So there's really no need in it. My my I think my biggest um, issue with it is the fact that they're pushing these Steam machines with the new Steam OS. Um, however, I don't know if you guys have looked at the available games for the Linux distro. There's not that many. Not that many at all. Um, so you're, you're mainly going to be focusing on Valve games and indie games. And if that's your thing, then by all means, give it a go. But if you're looking for, um, you know, the next Call of Duties, uh, any, of the, any of the new big publisher games, I don't think you're necessarily going to find them on SteamOS. Oh, well, everyone just should stick to Windows then. Be a waste of time moving. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I time to wrap up. Can't <laughs> I don't think it's going to be necessarily a good thing or a bad thing at the moment. <laughs> That's it. No, nobody's got an opinion on it. They just, yeah, <laughs> it's just steam. <laughs> right. I guess this is a wrap then. This has been episode four. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, I ran, I ran it a bit, which I really got to fucking get under control. But <laughs> if you're listening to episode four. I, I I applaud you and yeah, continue to listen to us. It's really appreciated from us all. Yep. Yep. Um, do you guys want to go out on us saying where they can find us on YouTube or whatever? Or? Yeah, we uh, can be found on Facebook. We can be found on YouTube, Twitch TV, and also our website, which is actually sponsored by the Radical Rascals podcast, which is radrascals.com forward slash pwb uh at the moment it is going to be pixels without borders dot com soon but i'm sorting that out with anzi at the moment if you're wondering why the website hasn't been updated recently personally i've been a lazy motherfucker <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's that simple i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna try and make excuses but it's just a case of trying to fit that in around my job and things like that but yeah facebook youtube twitch tv just type in pixel without borders you will find us, and yeah, ask to join our Facebook page, help us grow. If you want to play with any of us, any of the podcast hosts, or even just moderators on games, we're friendly. We won't bite. Maybe Moosh will, because he's into that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, get us, get on with us, play some games, discuss some games, tell us what you think. And thanks for listening. 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 Listening.
Snin. Snin.